The starter is done by Michael Romano in Manhattan. It's an unusual risotto using vegetable broth instead of chicken stock, then presented with a variety of vegetables. The main course is cooked by Wilhelm Gahabka at Naples, Florida. His yellowtail snapper is coated with ginger, cilantro, and macadamia nut pesto in rice paper. Phoenix, Arizona is the dessert destination. Roxanne Skokos offers Florentine cookies, almonds in butter, sugar, honey, and cream, then dipped in semi-sweet chocolate. Danny Meyer's Great Union Square Cafe in New York has been a culinary gem for over a decade. Executive chef partner Michael Romano has been a key factor from the beginning. His menu is described as American with rustic Italian influence, perhaps like this starter, risotto d'or. So this first dish is uh, risotto d'oro, we call it, because um, it gets its color from the carrot juice. In a departure from a normal risotto dish, which is usually cooked with uh, some kind of stock, we use a combination of carrot juice and celery juice, which makes it a vegetarian dish as well as very nourishing and very attractive to look at. So we start with a little olive oil and the butter. which will saute the garlic. And the risotto. This is the Italian short-grained rice, aborio. You just sort of want to coat the uh, grains of rice with the olive oil and butter. And then we'll start with our first addition of liquid, which will be the white wine. You just want to stir that until all the wine is evaporated or absorbed into the rice. And here we have the celery and carrot juice combined, and that should be just at a simmer when it goes into the rice. And what makes risotto different from other kinds of rice is that it's cooked slowly, ladle by ladle of liquid is added, and it has to be constantly stirred over a low heat so that the rice releases its starch and makes a creamy texture that's characteristic of risotto. So I'll begin adding the uh, stock. The whole process will take 20 or 25 minutes. Virtually all the carrot celery juice is used. You want to make sure your liquid that's going into the risotto is at least warm because uh, if not, it'll slow down the whole process of cooking. So now the rice is about done here. Just got another few minutes of cooking and we're going to start adding our vegetables in. The vegetables have all been prepared, cut about the same size. Some of them are left raw because they'll cook in right in with the, uh, the rice. Others have been blanched. Start adding these in. The vegetables include zucchini, carrot, and bell pepper. We'll add the green ones later because they'll start to overcook or lose their color. then green beans, asparagus, and parsley. And then we 
like to finish the risotto with a little bit of uh, butter. I never use cream in it because I, it takes away from the, uh, the taste, I think. It gives it a false kind of creaminess that should come only from the rice rather than adding cream to it. But a little bit of butter does help to uh, enrich it and make it uh, smooth. some um, grated parmigiano. At taping time, the executive chef at the fancy registry resort in Naples, Florida, was Wilhelm Gahabka. Born in Germany, his father was a brewmaster and his mother an exceptional cook. After schooling, he cooked throughout Germany and Italy before coming to the U.S. Here's his yellowtail snapper. Okay, our next dish is the baked yellowtail snapper. Yellowtail snapper is a very delicious load of fish. It's very popular, and I serve it in uh, ginger, lemongrass, macadamia nut pesto. It's a totally different pesto, no garlic. It's very nice with ginger, lemongrass, kind of oriental touched, but it's delicious. And I wrap it in crisp rice paper. It's like a opapiot, but with the rice paper, it's all natural, you can eat everything. I have the reality snapper, I season it, a little salt, a little jerk seasoning, fresh pepper, Take a little bit of annatto oil, rub it on there. Annatto oil comes from achiote seeds and is used primarily as a coloring agent. And we just want to, we just will sear the snapper on both sides for like 30 seconds each. Did you ever hear the impression you can hear the flavors? You can hear something right here, right? It's the protein in the fish is caramelizing. And that creates the flavor. So that's the saying. What I learned when I was up in the CIA uh, for a week, and I was, very, I was very impressed about it, it's caramelized the protein, you can hear the flavors. It's was from Ferdinand Metz, the president of the CIA. The nice golden brown on each side. What's cooking without flame, right? Now we're taking care of the ginger, lemongrass, and uh, macadamia nut pesto. Uh, we have some fresh ginger here, what we peel. I always use a spoon to peel my ginger. First of all, it's a lot easier. You don't cut as much, uh, much flesh off, and it uh, goes very quick. If you use a knife, it always uh, cramps up in the fibrous ginger. I roasted off some macadamia nuts to get a nice roasted flavor. We add those in the rubber coop. 
fresh lemongrass, but I chopped up already a little bit because it's hard to chop in the rubber coop. Lemongrass is a very nice uh, a flavored sort of the bamboo actually with a very nice lemon flavor without the acid. Very nice. Then we have uh, fresh cilantro, uh, picked the leaves and cleaned. The ginger is roughly chopped. Also add it in here in the rubber coop. Put the top on. And chop it up. Now we take some mascarpone cheese. Two spoons. This is Italian cream cheese. The mascarpone cheese gets its body, holds it together, makes it nice and creamy. A little bit of soy sauce. A little bit of sesame oil. A little bit of salt. Fresh pepper. Scrape the sides again. Can you see the nice, beautiful green color? Okay, next I take the pesto and spread it on the non-skin side. Just slightly all over. And it will give it a wonderful flavor. The flavor of the Floridian and the Caribbean. The coated fish is wrapped in hydrated rice paper. Take it out, let it drip off, and lay it on your towel. Next, we take this snapper and lay it right in the middle of the rice paper with the pesto side down. Now we fold the rice paper nice and tightly around the fish. Here we go. Got it all wrapped up, rice paper. Next, we take a sizzler, what we sprayed it with a little pan coating. Take the snapper and bake it for 10 minutes by 350 degrees in the oven. In the meantime, while the snapper is baking, we prepare the annatto vinaigrette. The charred corn and red and pepper vinaigrette. The vinaigrette prep involves finely dicing both red and green pepper, then removing corn kernels using a mandolin. We're taking the fresh corn, cut it on the mandolin so we get the nice kernels, and we heat up a skillet very hot because we want to char the corn and the peppers. Smoking hot pan, add the corn. and the peppers. Rice vinegar, add into a bowl, and we emulsify the rice vinegar with the annatto oil. Through constantly stirring, we create an emulsion. A bit more. Good enough. Good enough. 
Good enough, yeah. Then we add the uh, roasted corn and peppers. See how nice it emulsified. Add some fresh pepper. Touch of salt. Delicious. Okay, just out of the oven. The snapper is ready. Nice crisp. You can see the beautiful pesto shining right through the rice paper. Now, I prefer using um, knife like this because the paper is very fragile. Voila. We take the roasted corn, pepper, and not too vinegar, drizzle it on the plate. Take the snapper. What I prepared earlier, it's a little bit of Mediterranean slaw, I call it. It's all different kind of vegetables, marinated in a beautiful vinaigrette. Take a little bit of cilantro oil, drizzle it around it. Couple of black sesame seeds. Take some crisp rice noodles. Take the other half of the snapper, set it right on top. Voila. Baked yellowtail snapper in a ginger lemongrass, macadamia nut pesto, in crisp rice paper. Restaurant Rock Sand in Phoenix serves fusion cuisine, which entering the millennium means nothing. It features the cooking of chef owner Roxanne Skokos, and it's pretty inventive. She was awarded Best Chef Southwest by the Beard Society in 1999. Her dessert is chocolate dipped Florentine cookies. And to do that, we need to make the batter, and um, it's, it's done with sugar, honey, butter, cream and then lastly sliced almonds. And we're just going to add the uh, cream, butter, honey, and sugar together and sort of create a little molten lava action. Everything gets added at once. Now this is something that can be done well ahead and refrigerated. And uh, so if you're entertaining, it's something that you can do um, days ahead. And then the day of your party, you can uh, just form them, bake them, and eat them. These are sliced toasted almonds. So we're ready. Um, all the ingredients are melted and uh, the sugar is dissolved. We don't need to get any color on this. And we're just gonna pour it over our nuts. Now this will need to set up uh, in the refrigerator 
or if you have a cool room, it can stay at room temperature, but you need to, it will need to be brought, um, it'll need to solidify like this. Okay, um, I have a, a sill pad, which makes the job a lot easier. Um, these are available at most kitchen stores nowadays. Um, and you can also get them in a half size, which of course is what you would be needing in a home kitchen, obviously, unless you have one of those fancy commercial ranges at home. Bake at 350 for 12 minutes. So we have a little flan ring, which um, helps them remain um, in a consistent shape. Okay, um, they're out of the oven, and they're, they're very nice and uh, delicate. And then um, I have some melted semi-sweet chocolate here. And you just carefully lay it in there, and uh, then it needs to set up in the refrigerator. Okay, so this is a, just a very simple dessert that you can serve at home. Just a little vanilla ice cream and the Florentine. Okay, we're done.